Uh, my question's for Dr. Habermas. Um, you mentioned the deity, the death and resurrection earlier, and how those are the three main points to focus on. Um, and we spent a lot of time on the death and resurrection. I would love to hear more about how you talk about and prove the deity of Jesus. I would go after it a couple ways. Um, I gave a definition in one of the lectures. I did it more than one where there's at least eight different items that would indicate that Jesus was deity if he claimed these things. The four I like the best uh, concern his ability to forgive sin, which in Mark chapter 2 was declared by the theologians of that time to be blasphemy. Another one that a lot of the most influential scholars, um, Craig Evans, Tom Wright, a number of New Testament scholars say Jesus claimed to occupy the throne of God or that he would co-occupy God's throne, uh, that he accepted praise or that he was praised, and that he was pre-existent. And that in particular would cut out the view that claims he was a glorified man and God adopted him and raised him. Well, then he wouldn't have been from eternity past. So I like those the best. What I'm interested in at two levels, number one, when Jesus, what are the best claims that Jesus made for himself in those regards? He claimed to forgive sin in Mark 2. And interestingly enough, when they said that's heresy, he used apologetics. He said, to show you that I have power on earth to forgive sin, son, take up your bread and walk. So the miracle was to indicate that he could forgive sin. He claimed to be, he claimed um, uh, when he was asked, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? He said, ego and me in the French. In Greek, uh, now he would have said it in Aramaic, but uh, he claimed to be able to come on the clouds, by the way, which is an additional one. Some people put that in there. In the Old Testament, any, any person who rode on the clouds was God by definition. Um, and that's from Michael Heiser, too. Of course, a lot of people say that. And then he said he would be seated on the right hand of God. I think that's very clear. Pre-existent, before Abraham was, I am. The creed. And now, now, a lot of times, what I'm getting at is Jesus claimed these things for himself, but in the early creeds, they claimed it for him directly um, as his teaching, or they repeated his teaching. To me, the difference, I didn't say this in any of my lectures, but I, what I like to say today, but what I like to say is something shot his, something was shot out of a cannon after Black Saturday when the men were afraid to go out for fear of the Jews, John tells us. That something was the resurrection. Jesus made all these claims, but until he made them, they were only claims. A lot of religious founders have made a lot of claims. Now, in his life, he lived like those claims were true. He had other things going for him, but just too good to believe, right? But when he was raised from the dead, it was like, whoa, I guess he really was who he claimed to be. So the resurrection is what authorizes all those and got them just out of their minds with joy. We are told in several texts in the New Testament, they thought it a privilege to, to uh, suffer persecution. So those two things, Jesus claimed those things for themselves, and secondly, the early creeds mention all of these aspects. You get really amazing, and, and cover up, like not just Philippians 2, Colossians 1 said he was preexistent. So I think the combination of the two, and how else, if he, and the big thing is, of course, if he was raised from the dead and appeared, how else can you explain those events when it's not even recorded or believed by the Orthodox followers of any other founders of ancient, the major ancient religions? Thank <laughs> you.